Hello and welcome to Brick Tip number 61. I posted the work in progress video of the swing carousel yesterday and in that video I mentioned I would be explaining this elevator that I'm using. So that is what I'm going to be doing right now. Let's take a quick overview first of all before I get into the mechanics of it. We have four worm gear posts. Those are driven by two large bevel gears which are connected in the middle by this small bevel gear flywheel. Those are all driven by a single large motor. And all together that gives our lift. I detached the main drive motor and put on a hand crank so that you can get a better idea of what's going on. So as we turn the hand crank counterclockwise, you can see the platform raising and of course vice versa. Underneath, along each axle, we have two small bevel gears and they are going to be driving these two half bevel gears. They are both sitting on the same side as the small bevel gear to make sure that the worm gears twist in the same direction. You notice the same thing happens on this other axle and that is because we have these two gears with the flywheel in the middle and if you put two gears side by side they will go in opposite directions but if you stagger them in odd numbers with a flywheel or another axle in between they're going to be turning in the same direction. So the real trick to this elevator rests in these gears which are one on either side Normally when you power a gear with a worm gear, it's going to turn. But because we have both worm gears trying to push on that gear in opposite directions, the gear cannot turn. So it's only going to be going straight up. The nice thing with putting a gear in this way is that you can angle this platform whichever way you want because that axle is going to rest in any direction that you put it in. In this case I wanted obviously the platform to be level so I put it in that direction. Again as we turn the worm gears you can see that that gear does not move. Also if you would rather use the straight toothed gear rather than a round gear you could do so. In this instance due to the spacing restrictions it was best for this build to use the round gear here. To help keep the platform level I extended the beams out beyond our main support beams and then just used some pin connectors to guide our platform up and down and as you can see those same beams were used in the middle so it locks everything together you want to make sure that it's loose enough though so that the worm gears don't catch on those beams and cause our platform to lock up. Our tower is very substantial and it only gets taller as we push up the elevator to make sure that everything remains nice and square. I use these specialized rectangular beams and that locked everything in place. 
Just a note on these worm gears, if you are using a series of them like I am, what you want to make sure is that they all line up properly when they go along the axle. If they don't, you'll get some slippage occurring when your gear is traveling up. Also, you want to make sure that when you put the posts in that the teeth of the worm gear are all aligned. This is for the same reason, if you don't have these teeth all aligned, the gear is going to have some trouble going up and down and it's going to cause some slippage or worse, it's going to lock up your elevator. This elevator can take about three pounds with not too much difficulty. At five pounds, it starts to fail, mostly due to the splaying of the worm gears. So that's something you can keep in mind if you're trying to create an elevator like this. So hopefully this video gave you some inspiration to go out and Try creating a worm gear elevator of your own for your own projects. If you do, I'd love to see it so you could post it on our Facebook page. Thanks so much for watching. If you like this video, please hit the like and subscribe buttons and share it around so others can enjoy it. Thanks so much for watching. Have a fantastic day. Keep dreaming and bricks. Bye bye.